Hello everyone, this is our first video in chapter two. How exciting. Okay, this video in chapter two starts us off talking about a ton of new vocabulary. 2.1 is all about conditional statements, which we don't know what they are yet, but we are going to define them in a few minutes. In this video, the video we're going to focus today is just going to cover these first few objectives, okay? By the end of this video, we are going to be able to recognize and write conditional statements, identify parts of conditional statements, write the converse of a conditional statement, create a counterexample, and write a biconditional statement. So tons of vocab, like I said, make sure we get those flashcards ready. This is a very wordy um, section and less mathematical. So super wordy, not a lot of algebra going on in 2.1. Okay, get your notes ready. Here we go. The first thing we need to define is what on earth is a conditional statement. Okay, a conditional statement has two parts. Okay, a hypothesis and a conclusion. Okay, hypothesis and conclusion are long words. Okay, math people are lazy. We don't feel like writing those words out. So we say the, word, the letter P represents hypothesis and the letter Q represents conclusion, okay? And this if-then form is so important. That's what a, a conditional statement is and that's what we will be writing, okay? An example, it would say if, then we put the hypothesis, comma, then we put the conclusion, okay? Um, here it is using words. We say if P, comma, then Q, and in symbols, there we have those letters, P implies Q. So this arrow right there, we read as implies, okay? So this, in short, means I'm writing a conditional statement. P implies Q. The hypothesis implies the conclusion. And then here's an example, guys. It says, if you can read this, there's my hypothesis, then, conclusion, you are too close. Okay, and I could label this P and this Q. So let's take a look at some examples here. This first example is going to master, we're going to be able to rewrite a statement in if-then form. So as a conditional statement, and I want to be able to underline and circle, I want to be able to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. So let's get started here. The first example, if an angle measures 130 degrees, then the angle is obtuse, okay? Well, it's in that if-then form, so it's already written in a conditional statement form, so let's identify, okay? Here is my hypothesis. If an angle measures 130, then what's my conclusion? The angle is obtuse, which we know that's true. Let's take a look at another one. I will do the dishes if I get an allowance. It's not in that form. We needed to say if, Hypothesis, comma, then, conclusion. It's not in this form. So let's rewrite it as, if I get an allowance, then I will do the dishes. Okay? Talk about, make, make, make that deal happen with your parents, right? There is my conditional statement. If I get an allowance, then I will do the dishes. Here's another one. X equals 2 implies X plus 1 equals 3. Not in that if-then form, so let's rewrite it. If x equals 2, then x plus 1 equals 3, and we know that's now a true statement. Here's my hypothesis, if x equals 2, then my conclusion, x plus 1 equals 3, which would be true. And here's one last one for us to look at. Dolphins are mammals. Well, definitely not an if-then form, right? But we can rewrite it. If an animal is a dolphin, then it is a mammal, right? Dolphins are mammals. So if an animal is a dolphin, then it is a mammal, okay? So you guys are going to practice writing these in if-then form, but those are some examples for you to reference. So hopefully you just wrote those down in your notes. The next thing I want to talk about here, let's cover this up a little bit. Um, conditional statements, they're true only when Every single time the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is also true. Every single time there can't be one exception. Okay? 
it's false it when there is that one counter example all I need is one there's just one time that when the hypothesis is true the conclusion is false and that's called a counter example here's our next definition okay an example that shows a statement is incorrect think about counter argument we should be making these connections to other terms geometry is kind of helpful in that way where they sound like words that we've used not in math before, right? Counter example, counter argument. We're trying to show that you're actually incorrect, okay? So this next example uses that definition of counter example and it says, well, we're gonna be practicing to write a counter example. So is the conditional statement true or false? And if it's false, find that counter example, prove it wrong. Okay, here is the first one. If it is sunny, then it is summer. So is this always, always, always true? Okay, um, we can say here is my hypothesis, there is my conclusion. And I'm going to say this is false. Okay, this is false because it can be sunny in the winter time, right? It, the sun comes out every once in a while in the winter, so that is false. There's my counter example. Here's another one. If two angles form a linear pair, ooh, some vocab from the last chapter, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Is this true or false? Yeah, this is true. That is always the case. Okay, that is always the case. Every single time we have a linear pair, they are supplementary angles. Always true. And then my last example here. If a flower is red, then it's a rose. Duh. Well, that's false, right? There's other red flowers out there. Carnations can be red. Okay, so we have to just think about all I need is one example that's going to prove that conditional statement false. Okay, and that's all I need. It's called a counterexample. Let's take a look at another vocab word here. It is called a converse. Again, counter example we've used like a counter argument you know you might have heard of that phrase counter argument before converse what do you think of when you hear the word converse to me I think of like opposite or flipping and that's kind of what we're doing here a converse happens when we switch the hypothesis and conclusion of a conditional statement remember conditional statement on the side remember conditional statement that's that if P then Q. Always just keep on saying that to yourself so you remember it. Um, here's the example. Look, my conditional, if my hypothesis, then my conclusion. Notice, guys, now the converse is if my conclusion happens, then my hypothesis. Converse just wants us to take those two um, P's and Q's and flip them. Okay, here's what it looks like in words. If Q, then P, it's the exact opposite of the conditional statement and there's my symbols notice the q implies p okay it's flipped so we are going to look at some examples now of writing related conditional statements related like converses okay so here's the directions it's kind of a lot it says determine if the following conditional statement is true or false first that's what we have to do then we want to write the converse of each statement. So flip the hypothesis and the conclusion. And then determine if that, that converse is true or false. Okay, and if it's false, can we give a counterexample? Okay, Let we got this. It's great. <laughs> Here we go. Here's our first one. If a dog is a Great Dane, then it is large. Now that's true, right? You know Great Danes, they are large dogs. Now let's write the converse. So it's helpful if I underline. So here is my hypothesis and there is my conclusion. So a, uh, a converse tells me to flip it. So my converse statement says now, what do you think? If a dog is large, then it is a Great Dane. Now is that statement true or false? That statement is false, right? Um, not all large, not every single large dog is a Great Dane. What about my Husky, right? Huskies are large dogs, 
okay? Not every single large dog has to be a Great Dane, okay? There is an example. Here's another example. If you are a guitar player, then you are a musician. True, right? Guitar players are musicians. Wonderful. Let's highlight my, here's my uh, hypothesis, and here is my conclusion. If you are a guitar player, then you are a musician. So let me go ahead and flip that, right, to write my converse, switch it around. If you are a musician, then you are a guitar player. Hmm. Now is that statement true or false? What do you think? That is go that's false, right? My counterexample is you can be a musician and not play the guitar, right? If you are a musician, I have to play the guitar. What? No, you could play the drums, right? You could be a musician and play a different instrument. So my converse is false. Okay? The very last vocab word that I'm going to talk about today in this video is a biconditional statement. And a biconditional, I'm going to go back to this example here, is what happens exactly when these are both true. So when my conditional is true and when my converse is true. That's literally the definition of my next vocab word, biconditional. When both the conditional statement and its converse are true. And here's a new form. We can rewrite a, a new way to write statements in if and only if form. If both the conditional and the converse are true. So we would say P if and only if Q, the hypothesis, if and only if the conclusion. And now look, I have a new symbol, like it goes back and forth, right? This way it's true and the other way is true. So writing a biconditional statement, write the converse of the following true, they already told us these are true conditional statements. And if the, condition, the converse is also true, then rewrite the statement as a biconditional. So here's our first example. If two angles have equal measure, then the angles are congruent. That's a true conditional, right? So let's write my converse. Well, let's remember, here's my hypothesis. Here's my conclusion. Converse wants me to flip it, right? So I'm going to say, if the angles are congruent, then the two angles have an equal measure. Is this statement true? That's true, right? Congruent angles mean they have equal measure. So we can write now a biconditional statement. Two angles, we take my P right here, two angles have equal measure, and here's the Q, the conclusion, if and only if they are congruent, okay? Two angles have equal measure if and only if they are congruent, which is also a true statement. These make sense to the definitions that we've been learning, okay? And one last example here for today, you guys rock. Write the two conditional statements that form the following biconditional statement. Now, here's a biconditional statement. Two numbers are reciprocals if and only if their product is, is one. We know that's what reciprocals are. So now let's break down those two conditionals, or a conditional and the converse. So here's the P. Two numbers are reciprocals, and here's the Q. So my conditional number one could be if two numbers are reciprocals, then their product is one. And my second conditional, or the converse of that, is if the product of two numbers is one, then they are reciprocals. Okay? Tons of wordy things going on in the beginning of this section, guys. Great job taking notes. You guys rock. Really just flip through those vocabulary cards. Um, those flashcards, so you get the hang of all of these new vocab words. You guys rock. Bring any questions to me um, on Zoom.